This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. I want to talk a little technology today, a little software, a little code. Now, before that scares you, before that disinterests you, stay with me for a second. Now, as a quick little process before this monologue, check out a link, trendfollowing.com slash software. Free link, no tracking, no nothing, just read it. I can recall back in the day when I was first learning about trend following, the automation part of it the computer part of it, the coding part of it. And I thought it was so fascinating that even in the midst of this dot-com revolution and all of this new technology and a Bloomberg terminal on every desk, that there were trend-following traders managing over a billion dollars at the time, we're talking 25 years ago, running their entire operation on Lotus 123 spreadsheets. For those of you not familiar with Lotus 123, frankly, I was never a user either, but it was the precursor to Excel. Now, how the hell does a trading firm run its trading system off a spreadsheet? Don't you need the fancy screens everywhere and the squiggly lines on the screen and the colors and the graphs and the nonstop visual feedback? Don't you need that? You don't need it. You've never needed it. You won't need it for the rest of your life if you don't want it. Now, if you want to keep chasing the idea that there is a bell out there, a whistle out there that you need to have, somebody has seduced you with a piece of marketing about how they've got this great new trading piece of software and it will make your life easier. Let's just take a step back for a second. An Excel spreadsheet is pretty damn basic. Now, of course, you can code out an Excel spreadsheet, and you could add a decent amount of complexity to it. But there ain't no candlesticks there. I mean, for all you stock jockeys out there that are chasing candlesticks, and this one I do not understand at all, where the love of candlesticks came from. This is the most piece of shit nonsensical, and I hate to use the word, but indicator ever. It's useless. It's mental masturbation. Now, don't let me stop you. If you get off on looking at a screen and seeing a bunch of, quote, candlesticks, and you've learned all the names, and you think somehow or another this helps you, please don't let me stop you. Now, on the other hand, if you want to know the trend-following frame of mind, if you want to know the trend-following way of doing things, then pay attention. And first off, as I just described, Lotus 123, Excel spreadsheets, there ain't no room for candlesticks. I've told this story on this podcast before, but I recall for the first time pretty vividly, and this was not yesterday, walking into the office of Dunn Capital for the first time. This would be when Bill Dunn was still running the shop, the man of the steel strength handshake. And he was the first person that I met in the office. All those informational interviews started with the top guy. No screen on his desk. That I met the number two. No screen on his desk. The number three, no screen, no screen. Nobody in the office at that point in time. Now, this was not yesterday. This was a few years ago. Things have changed. But what's changed is maybe just people looking at their email. But at that point in time, when I first walked in, there was no screen on any desk. There was a cubby hole or cubicle area, a counter, and there was a screen on that counter. And above it was something that I best recall looking like a fire alarm. And on the floor next to the screen was a standard issue, what looked to be a desktop computer. And that machine was running the Dunn Capital system. I might be mistaken here, but I believe that was coded in Fortran. Now, to add a little flavor to this, I just finished an episode on this podcast, and the issue came up of this very idea technology in the early 70s. Now, I saw this in the 90s, but it was the same type of technology in the 70s. And this trend-following trader said on my podcast, 
that he could use the technology from the 70s to run his fund today. Is anybody having a light bulb moment? Is anybody waking up from something? Now, there's going to be some of you listening that already know you've been down the path. You understand it. You live it. You love it. You get it. But a lot of new people, let's face it, they're stuck in the sense that they can flip on YouTube and find unlimited numbers of dudes with a screen in front of them and technical, quote, analysis going to the moon. Unlimited numbers of this report or this indicator. So if you're a young person today, you probably think to yourself, oh man, I've got to master all of this stuff. I got to figure it all out. I have to find this particular piece of software before I can even get going. Let's take a step back. Let's imagine you had no software. You didn't have a damn thing. All you had was the price data. And I can guarantee you at some point in time, this is what trend following traders did. They'd take their open, high, low close for every day and they'd write it down on a piece of paper. Forget the digital Excel spreadsheet. They had paper spreadsheet. They write their open, high, low close down for the day. They figure out their true range. They figure out their volatility measure. They start assembling that data. The markets they are tracking. Maybe they're tracking 50 markets. Maybe they're tracking 100 markets. Maybe they're tracking 150 markets. Maybe this is in 1950. Maybe this is Dick Donchian, the father of trend following. Yeah, we can all say today it's a lot easier to not have to write this stuff down on a piece of paper, but that's what they did. So how much time would it take? I've seen Don Chien quoted that he would spend no more than 30 minutes a day on his trend following approach, his trend following system. Let's assume he did not have technology. Maybe he got it later on in life. He traded until I think he was 90 or over 90. But let's say it took him 30 or 45 minutes a day to just write down that price data, to crunch his volatility measure, to look to see if we had reached a new high on whatever market or a new low, going long or short. And of course, you had to size your position. You knew on that little paper spreadsheet, you know how much capital you had. So you knew what your unit structure was, and you knew how much you could do. You knew how much size you could trade. What does the candlesticks have to do with anything again? What does the MACD or this or that or whatever other name you want to throw at me have to do with anything? This trend following stuff is quite simple once you understand it. Now, of course, like anything in life, consistency requires execution, requires consistency, requires execution. You just can't roll out of bed. You've got to have a plan. But if you can accept the idea that the technology behind trend following is more of an accounting function than a trading function, you've won half the battle. Send me my consulting check right now for saving you a lifetime of worry, a lifetime of scrambling, a lifetime of stress, a lifetime of wasting time. Because once you accept the accounting nature of trend following, and look, several trend following traders I've met actually have this kind of accounting mindset or a CPA background. Yeah, some of you might be thinking, well, what does a CPA have to do anything? I have my, what do they call it? What's the, uh, the thing with, for the technical analysis? It's complete bullshit. The certified market technician. I'm sorry if any of you are listening and you think this is valid. It's not. It's absolutely not valid. CMT, right? Certified market technician. It's nonsense. It's a money-making thing. I still remember I gave a speech, nice enough of them to invite me in New York, 600 people, all of this CMT world. And I was explaining trend following like I'm talking about trend following today. I did this for like an hour. I asked for a show of hands. This is people that have all trained to be market quote technicians. Show of hands of how many understood trend following like I had been talking about for the last hour maybe 10% of the hands, all of the people in that room were candle stickers. All of the people in that room thought that the squiggly line on the screen that they were interpreting with their artistic bent was going to predict where XYZ market was going to go. None of that is trend following. Zero of that is trend following. In fact, all of that, quote, technical analysis, the predictive technical analysis, that I define in my book, Trend Following, 
is closer to fundamental analysis. I mean, how do you program that into a spreadsheet? You don't. Because it's really not about trading. It's really not about making money. It's about people feeling good about themselves. Now, some of you might be thinking, Mike, what in blazes are you talking about? People study to be a certified market technician or they study technical analysis to feel good about themselves? Mike, that sounds crazy. What are you talking about? The evidence is out there that this stuff is all bullshit, number one. So number two, if it's all bullshit and they're still doing it, why are they doing it? They get some kind of feeling. It's like going to school and studying some topic that can't be proven. But you get to say that you studied it and you can interpret it and you can talk about it. Now, do they have any examples of people using these strategies in a fund management sense? No. Are there any legendary traders that we can all look to employing these types of, quote, predictive technical analysis strategies? Nope, they're not. It's like WD GAN. I get emails occasionally. People think, oh, hey, hey, what, what about GAN lines? I'm doing GAN lines and uh, Elliott waves and I'm counting the waves and I've counted 600 waves and I'm, I'm in my closet right now, naked, counting waves. I've got 20 screens in front of me and I'm counting waves. That is a massive case of psychological neglect. A massive case of, I don't even want to say mental masturbation. It's literally just masturbation. It's pure masturbation. Now, look, I know some people will listen to this monologue and they'll say, well, where's the meat? What are you telling me, Mike? I don't understand. You didn't tell me anything. You didn't tell me the secret sauce, Mike. I don't know what's going on. You need to know what markets you are going to track, what markets you're going to trade. Number one. Number two, you need to know when you're going to enter. Number three and four, you need to know when you're going to exit with a loss or a gain. And number five, you have to bet your limited capital on each trade. You have limited capital, right? Yeah, we all do. We all have limited capital. So of that limited capital, how much do you bet per trade? 1%, 2%, 5%, 10%? It's got to be a number. Now, some people listening will still say, Mike, you didn't tell me anything. I don't know anything. I can't help everybody. I mean, some people are Jehovah's Witnesses. Some people are batshit crazy. Some people are in cults. Some people virtue signal for everything under the sun. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. And if I was, it wouldn't help. But I'm not. And if you're a mental patient, I can't help you either. The people I can help are the ones that are curious. The ones that hear something and say, hold on. They're just using an Excel spreadsheet? That's interesting. Let me go down that rabbit hole. Or hold on, I don't need to have 10 monitors on my desk. Let me go down that rabbit hole. Or hold on, I can trade weekly bars? One price per week? I only have to look at one price per week? I don't have to pay attention to any of the nonsense that's going on? Let me go down that rabbit hole. Now, where does that rabbit hole come from? That rabbit hole comes from expanding outward. So instead of being like so many people that text me and say they're trading five-minute bars and 10-minute bars and 15 and one hour, and of course, they're not doing any of that. They're just telling me that. I don't believe any of them are doing it. But instead of thinking you get your edge by going faster and faster and faster, I could think of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory movie, the first one where they're going down the river really fast and Gene Wilder is looking crazy and they're going faster and faster and faster. So these people text me, just regular people, probably nice people, people I'd love to have dinner with, but they've got it in their thick skull that somehow or another they're gonna trade five minute bars. Now imagine some dude thinking he's trading five minute bars. He's sitting at his workstation. There's a screen in front of him Maybe there's 10 other screens in front of him. And I've always wondered what the guys that put 10 screens in front of them, like they're at some kind of a cockpit, what do they do? Do they just move their head back and forth and just kind of wiggle? If you could see me right now, I'm just kind of wiggling back and forth, looking at screens. And what do you do? What are you actually analyzing if you have 10 screens in front of you? What the fuck are you doing? You're not doing anything. That's a rabbit hole to go down. The rabbit hole of not doing anything the rabbit hole of letting go, the rabbit hole of saying, hold on, this is batshit crazy. What do the best in the business do? 
Now, I'm not going to lie. Some of the best in the business will put a lot of marketing information out there. They'll have a lot of PhDs on staff. They will make a big show. But if you were ever offered an entrance into their back room, into their secret lair, and you saw what they were doing, trend-following traders are doing exactly what I'm describing. And they're using the type of technology that I'm talking about. Oh, sure, maybe it's been updated. And maybe they do have a screen on their desk to look at their email. But they are not sitting there pretending they're a pilot watching real-time data flow and trading on some infinitesimally small level, some small price level, five minutes. No, who's doing that? Maybe Jim Simons is doing it. Maybe Ken Griffith is doing it. Those guys got like 10 billion in the bank. Do you have 10 billion in the bank to locate your servers next to the exchange? No, you don't. So what are you doing? It's all about the rabbit hole. You don't have to believe anything I've said today. You can say, oh my God, that guy insulted me. He insulted my profession. He doesn't understand. He doesn't have his CMT. I've read the coursework, it's nonsense. And you're welcome to have that perspective. But some of you will pause and you'll say, damn it, he's opening up something. I gotta go investigate. Some of you are still gonna have your Richard Feynman in you. You're still gonna have your scientific method in you. And you're gonna take a nugget away from this podcast today. And you're going to go down the rabbit hole and you're going to figure it out. And damn it, when you figure it out, come buy me dinner. I'd be damn fortunate to go to dinner with you. We'd have a nice time. So get down that rabbit hole and have your aha moment. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash or just trying to make a lot of money, Trend Following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right Trend Following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, Trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.